and welcome to Really Old Movies. I'm your host Harrison Scullin, and today I'll be discussing Faust from 1926, starring Emil Jennings and Gosta Ekman, and directed by F.W. Murnau. All right, some essential movie details about Faust from 1926. Due to the success of F.W. Murnau's previous film, The Last Laugh from 1924, the studio promised him an unlimited budget with which to make this film. Until Metropolis debuted a year later, this was the most expensive German film. The failure of the original copyright holder to renew the film's copyright resulted in it falling into the public domain meaning that virtually anyone can duplicate and sell a VHS slash DVD copy of the film. The version I saw of the movie was 1 hour and 55 minutes, and that's the same as the Kino Lorber version that you could buy on Blu-ray, which also includes an an original version that was 106 minutes. And so like, there are many, many versions of this movie, so your your mileage may vary, but I recommend checking out the the official one that Kino Lorber used, because Kino Lorber, they try to restore to the original you know, intent the original theatrical release of films, such as with Metropolis. They have the complete Metropolis that one of my favorite films of all time. I digress. So let's talk about the plot of Faust. I give it a four out of five. I thought it was a great overall story. You know, I love, I love this type of story. I wish we saw more of Faust struggling though, with the fact that he's just made an eternal pact, you know, in one scene, he's like, oh man, you know, I can't believe I did this. But then literally two seconds later, he sees Gretchen and he's like chasing her. And it's like, whoa, whoa, hold on a second. Let's hold on to that for a minute. Kind of the gravity of the situation he's put himself in. We don't really see a whole lot of that. I kind of wish we did. Um, but overall, it's a fantastic story that I think we can all relate to. I think we can all relate to the idea of, you know, making a deal with the devil and, and not going exactly the way you want it to, right? And that could be figurative and literal in every sense of the word. So I think the earliest version book wise is from the 1500s. So it's one that it's one that's been told several times, but one that I think is still prevalent and still one that we could all learn from. All right. So in regards to acting, I gave that a four out of five You know, I thought it was great. I thought the actor for Faust was great. Uh, Gotha Ekman, I thought he was great, but I, again, I, I wish we saw more of him feeling regret and a sense of you know, oh my gosh, I can't believe I just made this decision, right? Um, but he was great when he was an old man and as a young man. I, I thought he was a good good actor overall, kind of showing the different sides of Faust. So I really liked that. I also thought the actress for Gretchen was good. But to me, the best actor overall, hands down, was Emil Jennings as Mephisto. He was so cunning and so evil. You could just tell he's a really excellent actor and really good at showing his expressions and scheming and whatnot. And, you know, I I think a lot of cartoons that show the devil are, they definitely base their design off of him. Cause when you watch it, you're like, Oh yeah, I've seen this a million times. And and this film, you know, is almost a hundred years old. It's from 1926, but yeah, I, I really liked him. I thought he was a great actor and a great, you know, antagonist and villain to the story. All right. So talking about directing, I give it a five out of five. You know, the plot and the acting weren't perfect, but I thought the direction was perfect. You know, I thought F.W. Murnau does incredible things here. You know, the way he has the scenes set up, the way that he has the characters interacting with each other, the costume design, the special effects, all of that. And I'll, I'll get into more detail with why, but I thought he did excellent here. You know, I'd put this up there with like the Ten Commandments or, or Ben-Hur and the 20s and the 50s versions of both of those films where the scope of it is just super epic. This feels like a German epic. It's not a small film by any means. And I was very, very thoroughly impressed. And, you know, you could tell because like I was mentioning, they gave him an unlimited budget. So he was able to do essentially whatever he wanted with whatever money he wanted. I believe that was with Ufa, who was a, a big German studio in that era. So, yeah, I I thought that was incredible. And, you know, with F.W. Murnau, this was his last German film. So after this, he moved to the United States. And the films he's most known for, and he's still in Germany, Nosferatu from 1922 and Sunrise from 1928, which 
He's a great romantic film if you haven't seen that one. But this kind of feels like his triumphant, you know, last hurrah, if you will. At least with Sunrise, that one's a much more compact, much more small film. It feels definitely more of your traditional film in that era. But this one feels grand and huge scope and whatnot. And only to be surpassed by Metropolis, which is huge and incredible too. So, you know, I, I thought he did an incredible job and is a great director that I think needs to be studied more too. All right, for cinematography and special effects, I also gave that a five out of five. I thought it was excellent. You know, there's these scenes where you see the devil, he's like standing around and then he fades away and it's just perfectly lined up or, or the one scene where he's like covering over the whole city was incredible or just, there's just so many of those effects or, or the fact that Faust is played by a young actor, but he looks like an old man. They did a really good job with that makeup and costume and all around. It just was a fantastic put together film you know, unlimited budget, right? They were able to make these incredible costumes and special effects and just all around. It looked really, really good. And probably, probably the highlight of the film, honestly, for me is just the camera work and the special effects they were able to accomplish. All right. So talking about the music, I give it a four out of five. And main reason is, you know, when it comes to silent films, I've mentioned several times, it's hard to know if the score you're hearing is the original one. This one seems to be because it matches up pretty well with the action and what's going on. But again, you never fully know, really. I think when I buy the Kino, because I'm definitely buying the Kino Lorber of this. Once I buy that, I think I'll know for sure. So in the meantime, I'll give it a four. But the music that is here on this YouTube version I watched is epic and grand and feels very, I don't know, symphonic, you know, like in, uh, well, shoot, even in Metropolis a year later had great, great music too. So th this reminded me a lot of that in regards to the music. I thought it was epic and set the stage really well for the scene. So I I'm pretty sure it is the, the original music, but not entirely sure. All right. So tallying that all up, that brings my letterbox score to a 4.6 out of 5. And I'll be rounding that to a 5 out of 5. So would I recommend this movie? Absolutely. I think it's one of the best films of the silent era. I really do. I love this type of story when someone makes a pact with the devil and kind of suffers the consequences of that. Cause I think that's something that we as a society can benefit from, you know, seeing that not everything is going to be as it seems and we can make figurative or literal pacts with the devil that can hold us down and, and whatnot. But the way he does so is so cunning. And so, you know, he dangles little carrots, right? So I love this kind of story. And again, it's one that I think a lot of us can relate to. All of us really can relate to. And, you know, it's just a lesson. Don't don't make deals with the devil. Uh, he just gives us pain and sorrow in return, right? And so I think it's fitting. This film's coming out the night before Easter. The, you know, let us follow the Savior of Christ who rose from the dead and delivers us from sin and from the devil. That's a much better way of of living, you know, the gospel and whatnot. So I love this film. I think it's a great, great example of the Faustian storyline. It's literally where that phrase comes from. And I think it's something that we can all relate to. Whether you believe in God or the devil or not, I think just knowing even the figurative aspect of, you know, when you're, when you're making deals, don't take the easy route out, right? Don't take the path of least resistance. Like take the high road, take the one that, would actually benefit and help people. So I love that. It's a great film. I highly recommend it. All right. So those are my thoughts on Faust from 1926. Thank you so much for watching and listening to today's episode. Make sure to follow me on Instagram and Facebook at Really Old Movies, where I discuss details about the week's particular film. New podcast episodes are released Saturdays at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Amazon Music, and video versions on YouTube and Rumble, Mondays at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. All right. Thank you so much. This has been Really Old Movies. I'm your host, Harrison Scullin. Take care.